All right, welcome everyone to today's MOOC. We're going to get started. I'm one of your hosts, Melissa Collins. This is our second MOOC of 2017, and we are very happy that you are joining us. More people are trickling in as we're getting started. So today is on loops and conditions. And if this is your first MOOC, just sit back, relax, feel free to take some notes. Um, you can expect to see MOOCs coming up every couple of weeks, and these are coming directly from the Tricentis Academy. Here at the Academy, we're the ones who work on our, um, our courses, our trainings, where you can earn your certification, certifications. And this is just an additional uh, learning tool for you. We just want to provide an opportunity to show you some everyday Tosca skills that you can apply to your everyday work. And um, yeah, we hope you can benefit from the, from the knowledge that we share with you today. So. If you have any questions about how to earn certifications, just let us know or check out our website. We have a number of courses on different topics, so um, that's something separate. So again, my name is Melissa Kahns. I am a training consultant here at the Academy, and with me today is Adrian Van Oyen, who is a senior training consultant. He will be your main presenter today. Welcome, Adrian. Hello, everybody. Okay, so um, I will be... Uh, beginning today with a little bit of theory, a little bit of background, basic knowledge on what loops and conditions are, and then Adrian is going to take us into Tricentis Tosca and demonstrate how everything comes together. And today what you'll be seeing is Tricentis Tosca version 10. So if you have an older version, um, things might look a little bit different, um, but we are using version 10. So. Some of you may have heard this before. I'm sure we have returning participants from previous MOOC sessions. Um, but just to let you know that we do have a question box in your GoToWebinar interface. And you can, add, you can put all your questions right into the question box. We also have a chat box if you just want to communicate with everyone, um, discuss things, whatever it is. We have a chat box and a question box. So that's the best way to reach us, um, since everyone's mics are muted, so you can hear us well. We hope there are no audio problems. We have people joining from around the entire world, so we hope everything goes well today. And this session is already being recorded, and in the next couple of days, you'll see that pop up on our MOOC page on the Academy site. So just have a look for that, and then you can share it with some of your friends and colleagues who might have missed the session today. So, with all of that out of the way, we're going to get right into our topic, and I'm going to begin. The first question is basically, what are loops and conditions? So, I just want to cover this on a very basic level. Some of you may have used them already. Some of you might be hearing about this for the first time. They're extremely useful, and we have some great best practices that we'll be able to share with you today, so you can use them well. So in general terms, we know that sometimes test steps need to be repeated in certain situations or they should only run under certain circumstances. These are test cases, test steps that don't need to run in every situation, in every run of the test case, but only under certain circumstances. So for these few cases, what we can use are special expressions, and these have conditions and loops. So loops and conditions are created to instruct Tosca what to do, whether a condition is met or not. So here you can see some of the icons um, of what you'll see in Tosca 10. And this condition here, the first icon, is the criteria that must be met if the test steps of a statement shall run. So that's where you set the condition. After that, you can set a loop, and this would be to repeat certain test steps if necessary. And there are two types of loops that we would use for various situations. And we're going to go into that, and then I'll also go into the if statement, which you see here on the slide. The first type of loop I'll cover is a while statement. When you create a while statement, you would first determine what the condition is that needs to be met, and then which test steps need to be repeated or looped over and over. So this can be one test step or this can be multiple test steps. It can be a reusable test step block from your library. 
And in the while statement, the loop will be repeated as long as the condition is met. So every time it's met, it will just be repeated. And then once the condition is no longer met, the test case will move on to the next test step. So that's what's unique about the while statement. However, we know that not all situations um, would be best with an endless loop. And so what we can do is we can set a maximum for its number of repetitions. So if the condition is still met once the maximum number of repetitions has been reached, say we set it to 30, we only want it to repeat 30 times, then the test case will continue on to the next step, even if it is still being met. Okay, the next one is a do statement. This is another type of loop, and it is set when you would like one or more test steps to run once before checking if the condition is met. So it's very similar to a while statement, but the test steps come before the condition. The loop comes before the condition. And this one as well will just repeat until the condition is no longer met. Okay, next we have what's called an if statement. You may have heard of this before. It's a very important type of statement. And for us, it's particularly important because we rarely recommend using it. So an if statement does exactly what the title suggests. Only if the condition is met, will the test step or test steps be run at all. So unlike the loops, test steps within an if statement will only be executed once. Okay? So although you may be thinking it's a great idea to start adding if statements to your test cases here and there, you have all these situations, if this happens, then I want that to happen. Okay, then if this happens, then I want that to happen. But we're going to get much more into depth with that in just a minute. Um, Adrian's going to go into when to use each of these different statements, give many examples, etc. Um, and what's important to know is there's almost always a better alternative to use ifs or even loops sometimes. Um, but they're, they're definitely helpful in the right situations. It's important to know what they are, how to use them, and when to use them. So pay attention to that today, especially if you're taking notes. The next icon that I'll show you here is an else statement. And so Tosca also has this, although you may not see it immediately when you create an, a statement. It's not in the default view. Um, but as the name suggests, it is used to provide an alternative option for when the condition of an if statement is not met. So this would be another test step or multiple test steps. So either the condition is met and the then statement will repeat, which is the if statement, or the else will take place. Okay? So although when creating the ifs, by default you only see where to create the condition, and then the then statement, you can always, always add an else statement. And you'll see that in Tosca a little bit easier than you do here trying to visualize it. Um, and finally, before we go into the demonstration of how these are created and utilized, um, I just want to mention this one last thing. I want to introduce this to you if you've never seen it before. It's extremely helpful, especially if you've worked with loops and conditions. Um, maybe you've had a little bit of difficulty following what exactly is happening in the overall flow. You know, if this condition is met, what happens? If this one is not, what happens then? So that's why we have the Control Flow Diagram tab. And this is a tab that you would open up and you would see visually what is happening through the entire flow of your test case. So here in this image, we have a map of a while statement. This is the way it would look like in the Control Flow Diagram. And you can see that here the loop will repeat, follow the blue arrows on the left-hand side, it will re repeat as long as the condition is met, but once it is no longer met, the test case will move on. And so you can see the, the blue no, and it goes off to the right-hand side, and it would continue on to the next test step. So that's it for the basics. Now that you have been introduced a little bit of what loops and conditions are, um, including the different types, we're going to move into Tosca Commander, and we're going to see how all of this plays out. And we're just going to begin with how to create them. Adrian? 
thanks Melissa for the introduction. Um, let's move directly into Tosca. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the, uh, the how to create loops and conditions. Therefore, I prepared already uh, uh, some test cases in to uh, Trescentis Tosca, and we're going to fill only the, the missing steps to uh, see how to do it, what, uh, what, what needs to be done, and how to create, in our cases, a while statement and an if statement. So for this presentation, this demonstration now of, 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 uh, of the statements, I've chosen only while and if statements because the do statement is actually the same object. It's very similar to the while statement, uh, only that we have switched the, the, the loop and the condition, just like uh, Melissa mentioned before, so that the, um, that the uh, st st steps in the loop are being ex uh, run at least one time. So therefore, there are no other difference. Okay, for the whole demonstration, or for almost all of the demonstration, I will use our sample webshop application. The ones of you who already did uh, the Tosca training, for example, the Transcendent Certified Professional training, or the Automation Specialist Level 1 or Level 2 training, or any of our other trainings, probably know this, the, this application. It's a very easy sample uh, application, it's a, it's a webshop. We have online available and that we are, we are usually using for our trainings. So the first thing I want to do is I want to, to empty a shopping cart. Before I, can, I, want, before I start to how to create a VAR statement, let me navigate to the corresponding page in our sample application. Therefore, I run the first steps of my test case. As you see in my prepared test case, uh, I have a precondition where I open the demo web shop, I enter the login credentials, I fill a shopping cart with some objects, and then navigate to shopping cart just before I want to before I want to empty it again. So let's run these first steps. And while Tosker is uh, performing the, the steps, let's uh, talk about what we're going to do later on. Uh, once the, shop, the, the, the shopping cart has been filled, we need to remove all of these items. This happens by ticking a checkbox, I'll show you in a second, in the shopping cart and clicking the update button. So, as we see, all steps have been executed successfully. We have in here now, for every product I have in my shopping cart, there is a checkbox in the so-called remove column. And if I click on this uh, checkbox, I do the ticket, I check it, and click afterwards on update shopping cart, then it will be removed. And now we want to make this for all the, uh, of the products available in the shopping cart. We probably don't know how many products are in the shopping cart. As of now, we know there are three, but who knows what happens in the next in the ongoing test cases uh, if you want to have this, 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 this step now reusable. Therefore, we use now a while statement to say as long as this table exists, so as long as this shopping cart product table exists, we're going to remove the last object of the shopping cart, which means actually we check the last, uh, last checkbox. Okay, therefore let's go to Tosk again and add a new var statement to the, uh, to the process folder. You can add a new var statement by pressing Ctrl N and W. You see in here, Ctrl N W or Ctrl N and D for, do, for a do statement or Ctrl N and T for an if statement. Uh, I will use very often now the, uh, the shortcuts. Um, I will rename the file statement to empty uh, shopping cart. This is also one of our best practices to rename things like the reuse, uh, re reusable uh, test blocks you can rename. Well, in this case, I want to rename the loop. Then I can also rename the conditions so that it 
easier for people to maintain the test cases to know what happens in, for example, in this val statement. As a condition, I add my, my shopping cart module. The shopping cart module contains the table, so it's, it's actually the, the, the module for the screen, and then we will rename it to verify that table exists. Okay, this means I want to verify that I still have this, ta uh, this table in my, uh, on my screen, and therefore I enter the corresponding values, which means, you see now, I verify that the shopping cart table exists. This is my easy condition. As you see, the condition is nothing else but the verification that we already know from several test cases in Tosca. Okay, step one done. If the table exists, what I want to do is I want to remove the last product from the shopping cart. So I rename this step up as well to remove last product from shopping cart. And within this step, I have to navigate in our table. Let's take a second look again. In our table, I have to navigate to the last row. Then in the remove column, I have to tick to check the The, 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 check, the, the, the checkbox, and finally, I have to click on the update shopping cart button. So these are the three steps, and uh, these are the things I have to do. So how to do this in Tosca? I first of all, say I want to navigate to the last, oops, last row. I want to select the last row. Then I want to select the remove the cell in the remove column, and inside this cell, I want to check the remove checkbox. And finally, I want to click on the update shopping cart. Most probably, the most of you know already that using X for steering buttons or, or links is way faster than using clicks because it's uh, by using X, you can directly steer the, the button and the link instead of performing the mouse action. For this presentation purpose, so that it's maybe easier to follow for you, I sometimes add now uh, add more often clicks the clicks so that it's easier to follow, as well as I add now a mouse over to the after the true for checking the checkbox. This performs a mouse movement. So what we have in here are now the steps. But this means now after ticking the box, the also the mouse will move to the to the to the remove the checkbox so that it's easy for, for us to follow Tosca's instruction on screen, what Tosca does on screen. Otherwise Tosca is simply too fast. Okay. So as we see in here, the verification, as long as the table exists, uh, we should do those steps. I will now run this VAR segment in Scratchbook. And we're going, we'll see that it ticks the last one, clicks on update shopping cart, it ticks the next one, clicks on update shopping cart, and so on, until there is no table anymore. Okay. Um, as next, so you see now the, the VAR statement has been executed in Scratchbook. If I expand the VAR statement, we see three repetitions where something happened, and one repetition where nothing happened. So why is that? This is because the condition itself, so the verification, has been actually executed four times. Because always at the beginning, the verification happens. Therefore also, the fourth time, Tosca tries to verify if the table exists. It does not, so it does not follow the steps in the loop. For the other three steps, you see, I have in each of the repetitions, the first, second, and third, I have performed the remove last product from shopping cart test step. 
Okay, that was the vowel statement. Let's move on to the, ah, before I, before I continue, one important thing, because Melissa already mentioned it, I almost forgotten. If I click on the, on the, the, on the vowel statement and select the properties of the vowel statement, we see something very important. We see the so-called maximum number of repetitions. In Tosca, is it, is it, it is not possible to create an endless loop. There must always be a maximum number of repetitions for each loop I do have. This is for a security reason that we don't create endless loops on the one hand, which is very good thing. On the other hand, we always have to define a maximum number of repetitions. This might be sometimes a little bit difficult. Um, regardless of that, I'll show you afterwards uh, an, a different approach how to empty a shopping cart, but, but this issue with the maximum number of repetitions is not a problem. You can change it, by default, the number 30. You can change it to whatever number you prefer. Um, in our case, 30 should be sufficient, but in other cases, 30 repetitions might not be enough. Okay, so this was the repetition, uh, this, was, this was the uh, maximum number of repetitions for bar statements. Okay, let's take a look at our second situation and on uh, uh, the usage of an if statement, how to use if statements. Um, you all maybe know that having to open all the application, closing everything, is, some, is sometimes not that easy possible. So in some situations we have, um, we have situations where we do not start the application from scratch like we did in our first test case, but where we have, for example, test cases who prepare our test environment. And then we run it inside. We run our test case inside. Okay, so what we're doing in here now. I create now an if statement and move it to the top. What we see in here is that the precondition for this test case, for in, in, in this version, is only to enter the login credentials. So I do not start the browser. So we have now the scenario that we assume that we have some kind of precondition test case that starts the that starts the sample web application, and also some post condition. Let's assume that close the application. It's like setting up your environment. Um, now it can happen that because other test cases may crash or may fail, you are still logged in. So before you can enter your login credentials, you have to verify that you, you are not logged in. So you have to log out if necessary. How to do that? Um, in our sample application, in the demo workshop, it's the way that you can only see like, the, the logout link if you're logged in. This means only if the logout link is visible, you can log yourself out. So my condition will be to verify that the user that a user is logged in. So I use my, my top menu module where I see the login links to verify whether I'm logged in or not. And afterwards I use the same module to say if I'm logged in, then I click on the logout link. Again, an X would be faster and so on, but in cases of, 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 of showing it, it's easy to use that way. So I also renamed this step to logout. Okay, so these are the steps we, um, I'll show it to you like that. 
this, this is the easy if statement. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to run the first test case. This is some. This is preparing my test environment, and uh, as you see, instead of only starting the application, it also logs in. So, oops. Let's assume this happens by accident or because another test case before failed or crashed. Our test case now, and it will now execute this two times after each other, will start, will verify if the logout is visible. If it is visible, it will click on logout and then enter the login credentials, fill the shopping cart and empty the shopping cart again. Running it the first time, will end up in the in the in the uh, if statement to kick in because the logout link is visible. So if you see already it clicked on logout, now logs it in and now it navigates through the application, adds the, the, the products and afterwards we are fine. And removes them again from the shopping cart by using the val statement like we created before. Okay, and it finishes with logging out. If I run now the same step a second step, steps a second time, you see that we have in here now in the if statement that the logout click has been performed. You see it happened. It took I don't know three seconds for the verification of for the whole step. To, to, to perform. It, I run now from Scratchbook the same test case, so the same steps, everything again. Now again, the if statement jumps in and tries to find, to verify if the logout link is visible. This now failed because it's not visible, so the, uh, the steps, or in our case, the, this only the one step we had in the dance statement does not happen and still the test case proceeds. And again, the empty shopping cart. Okay, let's take a look into Tosca Commander. And you see now, taking a look into the logout if statement, there is no error. Because no steps that are below it, no steps from, from the from the dance statement have been performed. You also see that the duration is this time 11 seconds. Why? Because Tosca made the verification. If a control cannot be found, I'm going to verify for, Tosca waits the, the specified time, and the specified time is the time you have in your synchronization settings. An if statement is part of a test case and the condition Tosca always will do. It always will do this verification. In our case now, this means waiting 10 seconds. Okay, here we go. This was now the if statement and how to create if statements. Okay, this was well, I have been two simple examples about how to create loops and conditions. The next thing we're going to talk about is the repetition on folder level, on test step folder level, and the recoveries. I will, I will have to mention now that we don't go into recovery in detail. I will only mention them and show you. Both of them are possibilities to avoid loops and conditions. This means I can use a repetition on a folder level instead of using a while statement, for example. I can also use a recovery instead of a if statement. Okay, or very often I can use those. Let's take a closer look into the best practice. First of all, loops and conditions and the var statement. So, we have now the same test case as before which means I want to do exactly the same. I have a, a, a login into my application, I fill stuff into my shopping cart, I want to empty a shopping cart. 
But this time, in difference to before, I do not want to use a while statement. And this is possible. This is always possible if I can count something in my system on a test. A very important note on this, Tosca is not meant for scripting. Therefore, we have other options. So, whoever wants to script with Tosca, this is some kind of not the recommended way how to use Tosca, although you could do it. But it takes away time and it's also making the maintenance of test cases very difficult. Very difficult also to view them, to watch them and to understand the idea of a test case. So what we're going to do now? Actually, as a human being, I already see and know, hey, I have in here three different rows for three different products. The easiest way would be to simply take all three boxes and finally to click on the update shopping cart button. That's how a human being would do it and that's maybe even a faster way. And this is now exactly what we're going to do using Tosca. After navigating to a shopping cart, I use my, again my shopping cart module to count the number of table rows. So I want to know how many rows are in this table. Actually, I'm more interested in how many um, products are in this table. But the easy way is to say how many rows there are and then subtract one. Why? I have a header row and I have three product rows. So in total, we have four rows. Okay, let's go back to Tosca. How do we do it? Well, I want to save any information. This is nothing else but buffering something. And if I buffer it, if I want to know the number of rows, there is a property in Tosca called the row count. And I, uh, number of shopping, sorry, shopping cart rows. And I simply buffer this number. That's it. This is the easy way how we can, how in Tosca we can save the number of rows in a table, row count and set the buffer value. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder and call it select all shopping cart products. So, if I want to select the shopping cart product, I have to tick those checkboxes in my shopping cart. Okay, this means I have to repeat some a step and therefore I have the possibility to set in the property of a tested folder a value for the repetition. As you see in here, each test tab folder so not the test kit, only test tab folders have the possibility to set a repetition. I can now make this hard code to say I want to repeat two times or three times or four times. In our case, this would make no sense. Because you already have a buffered number, namely the number of ship, uh, shopping card rows. So this is the number we already have. Unfortunately, this number is now a little bit wrong because we have four rows and we only have, want to make repeat this step three times. So what we can add here, luckily, is we can use the math function of Tosca to simply subtract one, which will end up now in the correct number of rows. So as you see in here, this is now the syntax for subtracting one, for example. In our case, we are now calculating also how many repetitions we want to have. We don't want to click in the header row in the repetition cell because there is no checkbox. Okay, which steps to perform? 
Actually, this is a little bit tricky, but easy at the same time. If I run this test, this folder the first time, I want to tick the first checkbox. If I run it a second time, I want to tick the second box. If I run it a third time, I want to tick the third box. Okay, how to tell this, how to make this happen in Tosca? We know that by using $1, $2, we can select the first, the second, the third row after the header. The command repetition in curl brackets tells Tosca to take the row now that corresponds with the actual repetition. So if I run the, the folder the first time, repetition is equals to 1. If I run the folder, if the folder is being repeated, so it, it, it actually will run a second time due to its repetition level, then repetition is equal to 2. If I run it a third time, it's equal to 3, and so on. And again, like before, I select the remove column and then click on true to so select true for, for all the, the, the remove checkboxes. I could already click on update shopping cart, but actually I don't want to because I want to perform this click only one time. I want to perform it finally after I'm done with checking all the products. So I update the shopping cart after I've ticked, uh, checked all of them. So the update shopping cart will be done, click it in here. So I will now also rename this step to uh, tick next remove check box. Check box, sorry. So, sorry, I want to press F9 to give you the overview. Okay, so what happens in here now? I repeat the steps very briefly. First of all, we count the number of rows. The good thing about this is we are not depending on a maximum repetition number like in the while statement. If we have now 31 products in the table, we have 31 repetitions. Nobody cares. If I have, um, if I have only two, I have only two repetitions. Afterwards, by using the command repetition, I tell Tosca to exactly use the uh, corresponding row, and finally I click on the update shopping cart. So let's now execute those three steps. As you see, the table has been cleared. And you also see that I have in this situation now only three repetitions. So now, like before with the VAR statement, that I had a fourth repetition because I had, to, I had a fourth verification. I have only three repetitions and the verification is not necessary. As I already know how many uh, how often I have to go through it. Okay, good. This was the, 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 the replacement for while segments. Let's also take a look at the replacement for the, for, for the if statement. Um, let me briefly close the application. Here we go. So the test case last steps also have been executed now. Let's take a look into the precondition we had before where we said what happens if from a previous test case we are still logged in. So if we are still logged in from a previous test case we used before the if statement and then we realized that this might not be the best solution for it. Um, therefore we have something that is called recovery scenarios. And also we can create recoveries and those recoveries only jump in, they are being only executed, if Tosca runs into an error and if the settings 
from your toxic command also use recovery. So you can also say tell toxic to ignore recoveries at all. So let's briefly take a look how this recovery would look like. Um, the recovery would be if something's not working, then click on logout. Okay, so what you see in here, or maybe a better performing click, that it's a little bit slower. Okay, so this means now we have a recovery scenario that, that tells Tosca to click on logout, but actually this step will be ignored the whole time when the test case is being executed unless it has it finds an error in one of the lower test steps and then Tosca jumps in and tries to take the recoveries. I also have to change the retry level in our situation now so that I don't want to retry the whole test case, I only want to retry the whole, the whole test step, that's sufficient. And I want to demonstrate you now these recoveries and how they jump in. Problem is, recoveries do not work in the scratch book. Therefore, I already prepared an execution list. So, just to jump to the execution list section, and we see in here my already linked test cases. So, I have the preparation of the test environment test case, the shopping cart version 2 test case, and the post-processing test environment test case. Um, what I still what I will do as well is I will change the repetition for this second the test case to two. This means this means that the second that the, the second test case will be run two times before Tosca proceeds to the next test case. So this means I have in this folder now three different test cases. Number one will be executed only one time. Number two will be executed two times. And number three, as you can already guess, only one time. Okay, why do I execute the second one two times? Well, you know that, at the, that the preparation of the test environment is a little bit a mess, so we are already logged in. So therefore, with the first repetition of this test case, the recovery should jump in. As our, because our test case is absolutely correct, it logs out at the end. For the second repetition, this recovery should not jump in. So, let's run these execution entries now. Um, you see this is now the, the test preparation. For whatever reason, it's logging in. And now, we have a situation that our, there's the, our test case, our actual test case that we want to execute, has a problem, it cannot click on login. Now the recovery jumps in, it logs in, it logs out, it logs in again, and now fills and clears the, the, the shopping cart. At the end, it will log out as, as it should, and it will now run a second time. And this second time it runs, the recovery does not jump in. It's not necessary because we are logged out. Okay, now you see emptying of the shopping cart again, and finally last test case closing the sample application. Okay, let's take a deeper look into our second test case. As we see in here, it has been executed two times. In the first time, you see there's something red. Uh, I heard from Melissa that uh, when I zoom in, some people have it a little bit blurry, 
I'm sorry for that, but I hope that this kid at least can see that there's a red, the red cross inside. With the navigate to login page, this step is marked red, and below that you maybe or can identify a folder icon. Like uh, next to this, it says logout. So this means that the recovery scenario for logout jumped in, and afterwards again navigate to login page. So the same step is like been executed a second time because Tosca tries to recover it. It finds something, it tries to, to, to perform the steps, and just figures out, no, maybe it can now navigate to the login page. And we're lucky that it works. In the first test, in the second uh, execution, we see at the beginning, only one time they navigate to the login page. Why? Because they already succeeded. There is no need for jumping into the recovery. So instead of using the if statement, to say, oh my god, it could happen, I say, okay, only if it is necessary, so only if the test case would fail, I want those steps to be performed, to, to be, be, be taken into account. And this is something that otherwise would not happen. Okay, this was a short introduction to recovery and how to use them instead of if statements. Good. Taking a final look at when to use loops and conditions. So we now show you how to use, how to create var statements, how to create if statements. We then told you not to use them and to use something else because we don't want to script with Tosca. Again, please, Tosca is no scripting tool. But still, there has been a need for those steps. So this is the reason why we, why we simply have them, these, these, these features. So when would I use for example, var statement. Let's take therefore a look in our last two examples. First of all, I show you an example of our obstacle course. The ones of you who already did automation specials level one or the cross browser test automation, the training, they already, should already be familiar with it, with the obstacle course. These are challenges that we that you, you can try to use to, to, to improve your Tosca skills for free, available online. Um, and I want to do now a certain obstacle. This is called, uh, this is the obstacle 81121. And the task is to press the click me button as often as necessary until it changes to enough so that the inner text changes and then click the button a last time to finish the exercise. How to do it. So in here now, a bar statement is necessary because I cannot count how often I have to click the button. So I, I say I create a bar statement called click the click me button. And when do I have to click it? Well, I have for my obstacle already the uh, module. As long as the text, the inner text of the button equals click me, then I have to then I have to click the button. I also rename this to click the button. I will now use the X instead of the click just to be a little bit faster. And this one several rename to verify that button is called click me. Okay, here we go. So you see now, this is a, a situation where we cannot count something, as long as we don't know it. And as far as I know, there is a random generator behind it to create a random number of clicks, necessary clicks. Well, it's the only way we can do. We can handle it. So I will now perform this var statement. 
and you will see it now with blinking because it clicks, 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 clicks a couple of times. In our case now it clicked eight times. Why eight and not nine? The ninth verification failed. Therefore, in all the other repetitions, you see that the click, the button step has been performed also in the eighth repetition, but not in the ninth one. So eight times we clicked it, then we stopped because the inner text, as you see in here, is not click me anymore. Now it's called enough. And now I have to click the button the last time. Well, I copy the step from my loop and say click the button the last time. Oops. Time. And if I press it now once more, then we see that we get the success message. So it says good job and we're done with the obstacle. So this is uh, an example where you cannot count something, where you cannot, uh, cannot identify how often you have to repeat something. Therefore, a repetition on tested folder does not work. So in this case, it's okay it, and it's, it's actually the only way to use a while statement. So whenever you cannot count, you would, use the, you would work that way. You would not work that way if you can sum account, especially in tables or something like that. Okay, my last example for today is when to use an if statement. If statements are very, 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 very often used to either script in Tosca, what you should please avoid. Please do not script, it makes it really unreadable. And in a second case, there are very, most people use it to um, avoid, uh, to, to use it instead of, of recoveries. Also something you should avoid. There are recoveries, use those. Yeah. Only if the recoveries are not possible, then I would use an if statement. Now let's take a look what when to use the if statement. In our case now, we have, um, we want to have a test case that is working on all, on all three supported browsers. And we want to download a PDF invoice that we have for one of our orders. The problem is that downloading files works differently in every browser. So maybe you know Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer all look different. Therefore, I have to say, okay, then the step of downloading a PDF invoice has nothing to do with the testing focus. Yeah? So the testing focus is, is the download possible but I want to have it to be able to work on different, in, in our case, in, so in diff, let's call it different environments. And therefore I have to use an if statement to make this one test case with this one testing focus uh, work, working in different browsers. So what I'm going to do now is to check and say if the browser is Internet Explorer, use the one reusable tested block to download the file. If it's another browser, use another. So first of all, I rename it to download invoice. So I rename the uh, if statement. And the condition, we have an tbox evaluate tool. If you're more interested in, in standard modules, you, there is an, a MOOC coming up in the end of February where, where those uh, standard models are being explained. And I call it check for Internet, Internet Explorer else take Chrome or Firefox. So the naming now is just because of what this is. And they, well, the expression I'm going to evaluate is the verification again. And I say, okay, the check if the configuration parameter browser um, is equal to, um, in our case now, Internet Explorer. If this happens, if this is equal to Internet Explorer, then I want to use the download 
file in Internet Explorer reusable tested block. So I have already prepared a reusable tested block that is performing the, or the, the correct steps. What happens if this is not match? Well, in this case now, Sarah, uh, Melissa showed it to you before, or told it to you to before, we have an else statement. I say, okay, and in the else statement, I now have again to differentiate between Chrome and Firefox. So again, I add in here an if statement. And now, in the condition, I this time I simply copy and paste the already existing. Um, well, at this time I check for Chrome. Check for Chrome. And else take Firefox. So if the browser is Chrome, Work, do like that, then use the download file for Chrome and else use the real test book for, down, for downloading it in Firefox. So, and that's already it. So this is the way how we could solve this problem. Before I now run this in, in the execution list and, let, and, and answer your questions in between, let me very briefly show you the control flow diagram. As you see in here, we have our if statements. The first one, that is actually this one, splitting up into the Internet Explorer or the other step. And the second one, this is the second if statement, where we differentiate between Chrome and Firefox. Because task is really get very quickly hard to read and hard to understand, we recommend to use if statements, as Melissa already told you, as rarely as possible, as well as loops and conditions. Compared to the previous, um, to the previous loop, if you take a look at the control diagram in here, where we did not use any var statement, you see that the process flow where we use the repetition instead of the var statement is very structured and very clear. Therefore, it's also easy to read and easy to follow. So, finally, as promised, for my last test case, I created an execution list. And in this execution list, I have set three different browsers. So I had the browsers of Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer. So this, we'll see now, I run all three execution lists. Every time I have the same test case linked. And you will see now that um, in all three different cases, the um, the, the Tosca appears differently. Okay, so enjoy Tosca working and you can already ask the questions and we are answering them um, during the test execution. Melissa. Okay, um, as we're wrapping up, just I want to let you know in the chat box I've added two links. First, we have the obstacle course.tricentis.com if you want to try out the obstacle. And then again, I have the link tricentis.com slash academy slash MOOC. And that is where you can register for our next upcoming MOOC, which is on February 22nd, all about the standard modules. And you can also view all of the recorded um, MOOC sessions right there. So just give me one minute and we're going to go into Q&A. We'll be with you just for a few more minutes. Okay. So the first question is about, is there a way to create a loop counter that increments by a number? Um, the answer, therefore, is um, 
is somehow yes, you could use buffer values for that. So uh, to create a, a, to, to to count a, a loop that you're going through, you would probably oops. Uh, ah, my computer deleted the, the, the file too fast. <laughs> Funny thing, file doesn't exist and being deleted afterwards successfully. <laughs> cool. Okay, um, so yes, this is possible. Um, so you would probably, inside a loop, simply set, use the, um, I will briefly show it to you. Um, you would create uh, inside a while statement or inside a reasonable uh, a, um, a repetition, you can simply add uh, the 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 t box uh, use the t box um, buffer set buffer module, and you can, for example, sum up. Say okay, I I I want to have a sum, and this is the uh, you can use the math function to read. The already buffered value, like we know it from from area and add plus one. Therefore, we only need to initialize the uh, buffer before the while statement, which means that uh, I know sum will be set to zero. And now, with every repetition, uh, the sum, the buffer value of sum, will be overwritten, and at the end, it will be the number of of, of repetitions we have. But well, yes, this is possible. There, this would be then the, the, the counter for the, the number of repetitions. So we also had a second, little bit more difficult to answer questions regarding dependencies of test cases, and if you can use the um, the previous uh, dependent the previous test cases. Well, this is actually not possible. Also, we don't recommend to make dependent test cases. So this is something. Again, a, a, a very difficult and specific question to answer. We usually, so we recommend that, uh, usually there should not be no dependency between test cases. We know there are, we know they exist, and now this depends on a certain situation that we ha uh, that we have. Um, therefore, a deeper look into this question is necessary. But unfortunately, it is not possible to make a dependency between a really executed test case and the next test case because they are seen from Tosca independent. Okay, is there another We're just having a look at one more question to see if we understand specifically what's being asked. Thanks. Okay, so um, the last question uh, uh, Melissa will answer directly in, in, in box. So it was about uh, incrementing the different uh, with the test case template, so she will answer it afterwards in, in uh, now in a couple of next minutes. Uh, if there are no other questions, then thanks for listening. Thanks for attention. Mm -hmm. um, we hope we could help you with with this MOOC. And Melissa, yeah, what did you do thank you, you very much, Adrian. Great job, and uh, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, that's about it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your participation and your questions. The next webinar, again, February 22nd. We have it in for two different time zones set, getting to know the Tricentis Tosca standard modules. And in the chat box, you have the link right where you can um, find everything about the MOOCs with previous sessions and registrations for the upcoming ones. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.